Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix Zen App Training. You're watching Streaming Applications lesson. All right. So in the past lesson, what we covered was publishing applications and content. In this lesson, what I want to focus on is another form of application publishing, which is application streaming. We're going to talk about the application streaming benefits, why you would want to use it over published applications, for example. We're also going to talk about application streaming features, what are supported, what you can do with application streaming. We're going to focus our attention on the application streaming components, and then we're going to talk about the streaming profiler. All right, so some of the benefits of application streaming. So instead of every time you bring up a ZenApp server, you're installing applications on ZenApp server, and in a lot of cases, these are the same applications that you're installing over and over and over again. With application streaming, what you can do is you can compile that application in sort of like a bubble and have it sitting there. Now, at that point, it doesn't matter if the application gets installed on a server as long as a server is available. So what application streaming requires is just compute resources, CPU and memory, and it will layer itself on top of the operating system so that when your users are connecting, they can run the application on the server. So that saves you money, first of all. It's easily scalable because all you have to do is bring up a Windows 2008 with ZenApp on it. You don't have to do anything else. Um, the application delivery is more effective and you can do the application delivery whether you're doing it to servers or clients. Obviously, it's lower installation and management costs. You only install it once. You profile it. You only have to update it once because, again, it's a bubble, so to speak. So you have a package that you if, you, if there's updates or upgrades, you do it once. And you do it from a centralized location. So all the management is also centralized. Anywhere, anytime, and offline access capabilities, that's very, very important. You can access the application stream wherever you want, but the added benefit is that you can access it offline. So if you're streaming this application to um, a Citrix ZenApp client or a plugin on your laptop and you want to take it with you because you want to run Word on a plane, you're able to cache that application locally and run it for a period of time while you're disconnected from the network. That's some of the advantages of using application streaming. Reduced application compatibility issues. Because the applications aren't installed on the operating system, they're not modifying the operating system, there's no no way for DLL conflicts or application errors or compatibility issues of any sort. Every application is contained within a bubble, so they cannot have any compatibility issues on the actual operating system that they're running on because they're not really installed on it. These are some of the features that you have with application streaming. One of the most important ones here to note is obviously Microsoft AppV integration and support. That's always handy. Offline access is a big one. And then th these are all some of the things that you could do or some of the benefits that you get with application streaming. Streaming application components. So these are the different components that you're going to need if you want to do application streaming, the streaming profiler otherwise known as the profiler, is what's going to create that package, and we're going to go through that in a second. You're going to need the offline plugin if you want to run these applications cached locally so that you can do it when you're not connected to the network. When you are connected to the network, you will need the online plugin. And then if you're delivering these applications through a file or web server, you will need a UNC-based communication, read-only access, etc., etc. All right, let's go stream some applications. Now, before we can stream applications to servers or clients, we have to compile that application and create that, that bubble, that package out of the application. And to do that, we need the streaming profiler tool from Citrix. That is a separate download that you go to mycitrix.com, you go in, and under ZenApp, you will see that you have access to the Citrix streaming profiler. Now, what I've done is I've downloaded the Citrix streaming profile to my server, and I've also downloaded another application. This is just a lightweight application that I've downloaded off the internet. It's an FTP client called FileZilla that we're going to use for demonstration purposes. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and install the streaming profiler. Now, the installation of the streaming profiler is not, not, nothing too exciting. It's just very, very basic. We're going to go through and basically default and next all the way. We're going to click on next here. We're going to accept license agreement. Default location, we don't really care. This is the program folder under start menu, so we're just going to keep it a default. We're going to go ahead and install. And that's it. We're going to click on finish. Now the installation requires a reboot, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and reboot that server. 
Now once the server reboots, we're just going to click on start here, and we're going to select the streaming profiler. We're going to get this uh, dialog box, and we're going to go ahead and create a new profile for our application. That kickstarts the wizard. Welcome screen. Thank you very much. We're going to click on next. What are we going to call this? Now I'm going to call this FileZilla. We're going to click on next. Now the first thing you'll notice here, the first question that you have to answer is, there are certain applications when you install them or when you stream them that constantly have to talk to the internet in order to update themselves or download a particular file or download a particular patch file, etc, etc. Now what the profiler is asking you, do you want to enable the users to accept application updates through this package? Now, as a measure of good practice or best practice so to speak you probably want this disabled but in some instances where the application requires that it communicates with the internet for proper functionality you probably want to keep this enabled for the purposes of this demonstration we're just going to keep this disabled at this time we're going to click on next now as I mentioned to you earlier what we're doing with the profiler is we're taking an application and packaging it into sort of a bubble so it becomes this isolated state this isolated file that can run independently on the operating system However, once you, when you start doing a lot of application profiles or application virtualization, you're going to get to a point where you need these applications or you need some of these applications to be able to uh, intercommunicate or interconnect or be able to talk to each other. So for example, some applications might have a dependency on Microsoft Word. Other applications might need to launch Excel. You're working on a particular application, but it needs to be able to communicate with Excel. So one, before you profile the application, you're going to need to gather all of the requirements for that application, understand how the users are going to use that application, and if there are any dependencies or any intercommunication that needs to happen between this application and another application, then you would have to come here and specify this. So what you're doing is if you click on Browse here, it'll allow you to browse the different profiler packages that you have, and let's say you have Word and Excel and they need to intercommunicate, then you can specify specify that FileZilla needs to be able to communicate with Word you can browse here for the profile that you've created for Word and add that particular application. So when your users are using FileZilla as a streamed application and they also have access to Microsoft Word as a streamed application, they're able to talk amongst each other. Now for, for my purposes, I don't have any other streamed applications so my list is blank, there's nothing here, but, but this is where you would go in order to configure that. We're going to click on Next. Now this is important because when you are profiling an application, whether it's application streaming with Citrix or application virtualization with uh, AppV with Microsoft and ThinApp with VMware, you always have to make sure that you are profiling the application or packaging the application for the operating system that it's going to eventually run on. So you're not configuring it here, you're not profiling it for the operating system that you're on today, you're profiling it for where it's going to end up on, where it's eventually going to run on. Now I'm profiling this application because I want it to run on my Windows Server 2008 R2, so by default you'll notice that it's checked Windows Server 2008 R2. You're able to configure also which service pack you're trying to configure this application or profile this application to by selecting this and selecting the, the service pack. At this point I'm just going to keep everything at default. You can also choose uh, the particular language that you're targeting. Once you've selected all of the relevant information here, we're going to keep going with the wizard. Now there's obviously the quick install where you know it's going to go ahead and profile the application real quick, but for our demonstration we're going to go through with the advanced options here just so we can see what else the stream profiler offers. If we click on next, now obviously the basic application install is going to run the application. It's going to install, capture all the data and create a bubble out of it. That's all the traditional stuff. You can also run it from a command line or script, etc. Now if you wanted to, in addition, you know, maybe install IE plugins or web applications or online updates as part of this package and you can select some other options. You have a bunch of different options here for how you're creating the profile, how you're creating the package out of this application. You can add more files to it, you can add, um, you know, edit the registry if uh, the, this particular application you wanted to modify certain registry you can do that. You can even just push registry keys down through this uh, streaming profiler. So you can change what you're trying to package extensively here by selecting any of these options. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an installed application. It could be very simply something like deploying files or folders or just modifying the registry in, in the form of a package. So once you've selected that and for our purposes we're going to go ahead and select the one where we're creating a profile out of that application. 
this point it's asking where is the installation files where are the executables for this application we're going to browse for it in our case it's sitting right on the desktop so we're going to go ahead and select it if there are any command line or additional parameters you want to run after the .exe, you can specify those here. Otherwise, we're going to click on Next to move forward. And at this point, it's gathered enough information where now it needs to simulate the installation of the application. What happens during the simulation process, as soon as I click on Launch the Installer, it's going to launch the installer as if you were installing this application onto your client or onto your server. It's just going to go through the regular installation process. However, it's not going to install anything on the server. It's just going to run through the installation process, gather all the information, capture all the files that it needs, and put all of this in a package. Now you'll notice down here it's saying that if this application requires a reboot, what the profile is going to do is it's sort of going to spoof the reboot. It's going to tell the application that a reboot has happened so that we don't have to reboot the server because we're not really installing it on it. So that, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and launch the installer and you'll notice here that at this point we're just going through the installation of FileZilla as if you were installing it locally we're gonna to agree to the license agreement we want anyone to use this software so I'm just gonna go with all the defaults here there's nothing that I'm going to change and you'll notice because I want you to pay attention to where it's supposedly going to install this right so it's gonna put it in C program files x86 FileZilla FTP client pay attention to this because we're gonna to look to see if these if this package was installed on the server when this is done Click on next. I'm going to accept all the defaults here for this particular application. I chose this application because it's a uh, small footprint application, so you know, it doesn't take very long to install for demonstration. That would be ideal. So it's already, it went through, it captured everything that it needed. At this point, it's ready to go to the next level, so we're going to click on next. What you have here is if you click on finish then okay you've determined that this is all you want in this particular bubble this is all you want in this particular package however you have the option of packaging multiple applications within the same bubble so there's nothing to stop you from having Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint within the same bubble and delivering that bubble to the user so instead of having you know instead of packaging applications independently maybe you want to create one large package of these applications and deliver it to your end users now granted some of you are asking well why would I do that the whole idea behind what I'm trying to do is so that I avoid application conflicts application compatibility issues so on and so forth however there might come a a day or you might come to the conclusion that look I know that Microsoft Word Excel PowerPoint play nicely together instead of packaging each one of them separately I want to package them all in the same package and deliver them to the user for the purposes of this demonstration I'm gonna keep them isolated so we're just going to package FileZilla and we're gonna click on next now what the profile is saying here is hey I found two executables two shortcuts within this package that I'm running that are applications now what you want to do is you want to make sure that the application is launching properly if there are any modifications that you want to make to the application this would be the time to to make that modification for example if you're launching Adobe Acrobat and you want to accept the license agreement so that the users don't have to accept it every time they log in then what you would do is select FileZilla you want to run the application and we are just going to click on OK here to accept this. Any any modifications that you want to make at this time or at this point, you can do them to the application now. You know, maybe populate certain things, disable whatever you need to do. This would be a good time to make that change. When you're done, we're just going to click on close. Now, in this instance with FileZilla, I only have you know one executable really that I want to that I care about is FileZilla. But certain other applications that you might be deploying might have more than one executable, and certain executables will launch different portions of the application that do certain things. So you might want to launch each one of them independently just to configure them or tweak them or do anything in particular that you want to do. Now the command line parameters here, if you want this application to run with certain parameters after it you can specify those here once everything is ready and you're good to go you can also add so if the profiler didn't detect some executables in the application that you want to make available for publishing at a later time you can click on add and point to that shortcut point to that file so that the file is available here and when we go ahead and, and publish this package later it'll also make it available so I want you to keep pay attention to these applications here because whatever you specify here is going to become an option later on when we try to publish this application so anything you add you can publish later on as well and click on next to continue here
All right, so the earlier screen allowed you to run that particular application, run the executable, make any modifications that you want, make sure it's you know to your standard if you want to you know configure it or tweak it in any any way or format. Now here, what's asking you if there's any additional shortcuts, any plugins, anything else that you want to add to this particular package, this would be the right time to do that. Now, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to add anything, so I'm just going to keep it at defaults. Click on next at this point. Now, I don't have a certificate authority, but if you wanted to, if you're in an environment that's high secure and you wanted to sign these packages for better authenticity to make sure that you just have a digital signature on them so that, you know, nobody can publish other applications or no other stream applications can, can function without being, you know, digitally signed. And if they're not, then you know these aren't published by your application or your department. Then you can configure SSL settings here. I don't have anything to sign the profile with, so I'm just going to skip this section altogether click next and that's all there is to it as soon as you click on finish it's gonna go ahead and package the entire application and make it ready and nice for you so if you expand it right now you'll be able to see everything that this application has modified you know where it's putting it some of the files that are there etc etc and some of the other things to pay attention to here some information about the package some information about the targets applications, the file types, if there's any file types that it's associating with, and the digital signature. Now when you're ready to finish up, you're going to click on file and we're going to go to save. Now it's going to ask us for a network location where you want to save this file. Now I've already given it a UNC path XAO1 backslash packages. This is where I wanted to save my package to and the package is called FileZilla. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And there you go, bada bing, bada boom, it's done. Now let's take a look at a couple of things here. If we go and browse this computer, technically nothing should be installed on the C drive. So if I go to C, Program Files 86, remember that I showed you the path should have been FileZilla, etc., something? Well, I don't have any FileZilla here, so it didn't really install or modify the file system or the registry in any way, shape, or form. Now, if we go to the UNC path where I have my packages, and in this case, it's just on my C drive here, you'll see that I already put the package on there and already has the entire profile for this particular application configured. Now, what we need to do is go into the Citrix delivery console and publish this particular package. And to do that, we're going to launch the Citrix delivery services console. All right, we're going to expand our farm here. Then we're going to right click on applications, drag down to published applications. We're going to go next and we're going to call this FileZilla. And we're going to do stream, then we're going to give it a description of FTP client. Now, we've already published applications that are installed on the server. We've already talked about content and server desktop. I'm going to talk about streaming to servers, but for now, what I want to focus on is stream to client. What stream to client means is that you are going to deliver a streamed application down to the client. You're going to layer that application on top of the operating system so it won't install, it won't modify anything on the operating system, but it's going to use all the local or the client device's operating system and the local resources, CPU and memory, to run that application. So you're streaming it down, you're not actually installing it or running it from a server at this point. So we're going to click on next to continue. And here it's saying, well, where is the profile for this particular application? So what I'm going to do is click on Browse, and we are going to browse to the package's location where we have this application. It's going to need a, an extension of that profiler, which is what the extension for Citrix Streaming Profiles is. So I have FileZilla here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Click on Open. Down here from the drop down menu, remember when we were talking during the profile creation, I told you pay attention because whatever you're adding here, you'll be able to select later on. So when, when we're going through the profile or the streaming of the application, we only had two shortcuts, two executables that we discovered and that we wanted as part of the package. So as a result, now you have two executable sort of speak that you can choose from here. Obviously, I don't want to, I don't want to select uninstall. So we're just going to go ahead with FileZilla, the default. If there's any extra command line parameters that you want to add while running this application you can add them here otherwise you can click on next now this is important when the users have the Citrix offline plugin installed on their laptop or desktop so that if they should lose connection with the network they can continue to run that application if you want that to work obviously the users would need to have the Citrix offline plugin installed and in this case you would have to enable offline access 
And then there are two ways. How do you want the server, or how do you want the streamed application to cache itself? There are two ways by which you can cache the application locally. You can start the caching process the first time you launch the application. Now, obviously, this is the preferred method, right? This is you know what you would prefer to do. Now, depending on the size of the application, this might be good or bad. Now, because it's FileZilla, it's a small application. It'll probably cache very quickly as soon as you launch it at first use. If it was a larger application, that you probably want to you know take a, a closer look and maybe do pre-caching of the application at login rather than pre-caching the or caching the application at launch. That way, when you go to launch the application, there's a lot of cache already there, and you can launch it much faster. So again, it depends on the circumstance. It depends on the application that you're streaming and that you're profiling. You'll make the determination and the choice either way. For the purposes of our example, we're going to keep it at cache application at launch. And this is some of the um, same steps that we've done earlier. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly here and select the users that I want to give the streaming application to. And in this case, if I could type correctly, we are going to use Citrix and we're going to go into users and let's give this to the help desk. Click on OK. And click on Next. Again, we've gone through all this again. I'm going to keep the default icon and we are going to finish. I was going to applications here and there you go. We have just created a streamed application that we can now deliver to our users client devices. It's going to stream to the client devices. Now let's go back into the published application here and go through this wizard one more time. Now let's do FileZilla and let's just give it the abbreviation here and click on next. So we've covered the lower section, we've covered the top sections. Let's focus our attention a little bit on the application types here. Now when we were talking about application types, we've already covered installation or installed applications. That's easy. Now what you can do is access from a server and you can select something else. You can select streamed to server. So what happens when you select streamed to server, it's the same concept as when you're streaming to the client, except instead of streaming the application down to the user, you're streaming this application to a ZenApp server, and then the user is connecting to the ZenApp server and launching that application locally on the ZenApp server. Now, let's think about this for a second. So what's happening here is the application isn't really installed on the ZenApp server. It's just running on the ZenApp server. So what happens is technically these servers, these ZenApp servers become just compute resources for these applications. Users can log in to any ZenApp server. There are no applications that are installed on these ZenApp servers. They're simply compute resources. And based on their credentials, based on their username and password and group memberships, they are going to see a list of applications. They can run these applications. These applications will be streamed down to the ZenApp server and life is good, right? Now you don't have to install anything. You don't have to worry about uh, installing anything on a ZenApp server and compatibility issues and troubleshooting and upgrading, nothing. Everything is streamed to the ZenApp server. It performs very well. It's on you know, server class hardware. Life is good, right? So that's one option of doing it. However, while there are a lot of pros with, with this type of solution, there are also cons. And one of the cons is because you are not pinning an application to a server, troubleshooting becomes very difficult because now all these servers become compute resources. You don't really know where this application is running or where this user is connected, etc., etc. You can see where the user is connecting, but you don't know where the application is running. So it poses some sort of a troubleshooting challenge, so to speak. But yeah, it's worth the challenge compared to the, the pros that you get out of it. Now, this is if you are accessing it from the server. Now, another option would be to use streamed if possible otherwise access from a server. So what you're telling it here basically is look, my first option is I'd like to stream this application to the user. If I'm incapable of streaming this application to the user, then what I want is I want the user to be able to log in and use this application stream to the ZenApp server. Now you can also change that. So your first option might be to stream to the user. If streaming to the user isn't possible, then your second option might be to just, hey, give them an installed application. So in that case, if that application that they're trying to access is available as an installed application, then the second choice would be to give them in the installed application. So let's go ahead and select stream to server here. We're going to click on next. 
And we're going to go through the same process that we did earlier. We're going to select FileZilla here. And we're going to click on Next. Now keep in mind, the Enable Offline Access here doesn't refer to running it offline on the server. That's physically impossible, right? You need a connection to the server. So what's happening here is you're still going through the process of saying stream to the client first. So this is still what we've done before, which is stream to the, cl the client. If the client isn't available, the client device isn't available, then give them streamed access to the server. So I just want to make sure that this isn't confusing you guys. This is still part of the wizard that's delivering this application stream to the client. Now, if it's not available, the alternative is to stream it to the server. And we're going to select which servers here we want it to support. And we're going to select the workgroup CRM servers. We're going to click on Next. Again, we're going to go through the same process here. I won't bore you with that. And hopefully, I can type this time. And let's do it read-only at this point. We're going to click on Next. Same thing here. We're going to do Next and Finish. So what was the step that was the difference between client and stream to server well there was one step that was different and that step was we now selected the Zen app servers that we want to make available to this application in the event that streaming to desktop does not work now if you select FileZilla here you're going to see a lot of the same things that you've been seeing with all of the other options that you can configure or manipulate the application properties any way you want so if we go back into application properties you'll see that it's all the same configuration and configuration options that you have access to but there are a few settings that I want to show you so if you click on alternate profiles here you're able to specify a different profile for this application depending on the client's IP address so you can have uh, maybe a secure application and a non secure application or an application that has more features that may require additional licensing and you don't have all the licenses so depending on where the user is coming in from if the user is a developer or a consultant you might want to give them a different profile of this application in that case you can get very granular very customized here obviously you'll have to create another profile for the application but you can come here and say look anyone that's coming from the IP range X I want you to give them this profile rather than that profile and the other thing is you can control the user privileges on how these packages are running on the client devices now this only affects or this only applies when you're running the uh, streamed applications on the client devices if you want them more secure and you don't want to give a lot of privileges to the user that's running these applications you can run these applications with the least privileged user account on the local device all the other settings are everything we've gone through already all right let's go ahead and switch back to our presentation and recap what we've learned cool lesson huh short sweet to the point <laughs> alright so what have we learned what have we covered so we started off by talking about the benefits of application streaming we talked about how you have centralized management centralized control you're creating a single bubble that you can deploy once either to servers or clients and if you need to update it you update it once so you get all these benefits you have offline access you have anywhere access to that application there are no compatibility issues because the applications aren't literally being installed on the OS they're being layered on the OS in an isolated bubble in an isolated package so they can interoperate but they're not installed on the operating system thereby there are no modification of files or registry on the operating system itself as such the likelihood of application compatibility or issues is almost non-existent then we moved on to talk about the different application streaming features we talked about the offline access we talked about um, app v integration there's a bunch of application features that you get with application streaming that you wouldn't necessarily get with any other form of application publishing so to speak we talked about the application streaming components that you need the Citrix offline plugin if you're going to run these applications offline when you're disconnected from the network you need the online plugin for when you're connected if you're you can stream these applications from a file or web server you're going to need read-only access etc etc and then during the demonstration portion of this lesson we went through the streaming profile we created a profile we published the application to the server we also published the application to the client and we talked about the differences and how you go about running or publishing streamed applications finally I hope this lesson was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing